dogs are awesome. I mean, literally, just a smile on a dog's face has the ability to light your heart up. And I've even come up with an equation for this, just how awesome they are. Take anything, any situation that there is. Fire a dog in there, and it's going to become awesome. For instance, mud. It's not awesome. But now you put a dog into that situation, and you have awesome. And the best part is that science backs up just how awesome dogs are. Harvard University recently conducted a study and found that just by owning a dog, it not only does that have the ability to make you happy, but it can make you healthier. Just petting your dog has the ability to lower your blood pressure, lower your heart rate, make you calmer and more mindful. Owning a dog has those who are isolated within their homes getting out more, more interactive, interacting within their communities. I've even come up with an equation, thinking and showing that dogs have the ability to grow our communities. For instance, take a look at Jack. Jack never really got out much, stayed at home a lot. That wasn't until he got a puppy. And then Jack was forced to get out and walk his puppy. Here is where Jack meets Jill. Jill falls in love with Jack's puppy. One year later, they have a baby, community growth. <laughs> and 41% of North Americans today actually have a dog. Now, as awesome as dogs are, sadly, they're flawed, according to science. You see, dogs today aren't living that long, not as long as they should, and they're dying very young. And when we ask the questions why, these animals are leading in some pretty scary statistics. And we have to start looking around the world at these statistics. We know that in the last five years in the United Kingdom, diabetes is up 900% when it comes to the dog. In North America, the obesity epidemic is up 60%. These animals are plagued with obesity. And that statistic continues to climb. And the worst one, the most staggering statistic of all, the one that is decimating our pets all over the planet, is cancer. One in two dogs today will succumb to cancer. And in fact, research is showing that out of any mammal on the planet, the dog has the highest rate of cancer. And this has left scientists scratching their heads. What's happening? So what you're seeing now is the largest canine study to ever be conducted. 3,000 dogs, $25 million to figure out why is the dog so broken. And it's being conducted on, gold, on golden retrievers. So we have to ask the question, what is going on? Now, according to Dr. Lappin, who's involved in the study, he said that when he graduated from vet school in the 70s, dogs used to live to be 17. Sadly, today, they're only living to be 11. And the golden retriever itself is only living to be 9 or 10. So what is it? What are these factors that are plaguing us with cancer? Well, I'll tell you, when the Broad Institute conducted an extensive study with cancer, they found mind-blowing information. Literally every human had his jaw on the ground when the research came out. And it showed that although 10% of cancer is genetic, 90% are the results of lifestyle and environmental factors, the things that are around us. And so if we want to dig deeper into that 90%, let's remove the 10% for a second. You can't change your dog's genes if you went and you adopted your dog from a shelter. So what's in that 90%? Well, if we were to fire it into a, like a cancer buy and we were to remove slices, what is research telling us? What's causing all this cancer? Stress, obesity, infection, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, and toxins and pollution. But it leaves us with this giant piece to the puzzle, that big piece right there. And what is it you're seeing? It's diet. And according to science, this is the most important piece that we're not focusing on. In fact, after multiple studies, 30 to 40% of all cancers 
can be prevented by simply implementing dietary changes. 40% of cancer can be prevented by food. In 2013, my dog Sammy was diagnosed with cancer. And so I knew I needed to do everything I could in my power to figure out how and why this happened. I burnt through routers, ethernet cords, researching day in and day out, trying to figure out how was I going to stop this disease from progressing in her body. And when research pointed to me that 40% of cancer was in the diet, I knew that's where I had to start. So I set out on a worldwide journey, traveling around the world looking for answers. And today, I'm going to share with you my journey. But before I do, there's a very important word that we all need to understand. And that word's called nutrigenomics. And nutrigenomics is the new science between the correlation of diet and how it affects our DNA. For example, let's say you were handed a whole bunch of lousy genes. Your parents, their parents, their parents, there was cancer in that whole family. You have the ability to keep those genes off by putting good functional foods in your body. But then you go and you start putting things in your body that aren't so good. You have the ability to spark those genes on. And you're creating disease. And I knew that there was going to be a correlation between nutrigenomics and my dog. And so my journey started. And as a blogger today, I go to information to the World Wide Web, a digital community's largest interactive database where all the information in the world is there. And for me, it seemed pretty evident where I was going to go. I wanted to know what are the oldest dogs in the world were eating. Logically, these dogs were bulletproofing themselves from cancer, so what were they doing? So I started to travel and I started to research. And I found dogs on all different parts of the continent that were living in their teens and in their 20s until a viral post that literally broke the internet. And it was discovered that the oldest dog in the world was discovered in Australia. Meet Brian McLaren a dairy farmer, a beautiful man with a simple life, and a beautiful dog. And he had no idea that his 30-year Kelpie, 30-year-old dog, was going to be a world record holder for the oldest dog in the world. So this is where I had to start. I needed to talk to this man. Oh my gosh, Brian, tell me, what were you feeding your pet? Now he told me that there were a couple factors here when he was feeding Maggie. For instance, he wasn't feeding her a lot. Calorie restriction. He said some days the dogs wouldn't eat. She was self-fasting. And then exercise came into the equation. I told him here in North America, people like to go outside after work and walk the dog around the block for 20 minutes. Or they've got that wonderful giant fence in the yard and just let the dog go, let the dog go run in the yard. And he laughed at me. And he said to me, my dog on average gets nine kilometers of exercise a day. She follows me around while I'm driving around in the tractor. And so when it came to her diet, please share it with me, he told me, look, every day I share with her a giant glass of raw-fed grass milk that comes straight from the cow. And then at night, sometimes she sneaks around after there's a cattle birth and she starts eating cattle placenta. It's not going to be bottled. <laughs> but then he also told me that he was adding some unconventional things into her bowl that he believes increased her longevity. So I had to know. But before I share that, I knew I needed more data. And what you're seeing here is the longest observational study to date, a 30-year study that shows the correlation between diet, cancer, and longevity, held on almost 7,000 animals. And heading the study was a Norwegian researcher named Thomas Sandberg. And so I got in contact with Thomas. And this beautiful man was willing to share 16 years already into the project of his data that I'm going to share with you today. And so what you're looking at is a researcher's graph, terribly cluttered, very hard to figure out. So I've kind of done a little bit of modification, and we can zoom into it. Now, what you're looking here at the green region, all those 8.5s, these are specific breeds. And this one primarily is a Great Dane. Great Danes only live to be about 8.5 on average. Great Danes eating an average dog food diet. Now, the blue section is the extension of life when there was a diet modification. The blue section is almost doubling the animal's life 
when the pet owner changed the diet for the dog. Holy smokes. You tell me right now what that is, Thomas. And Thomas said, you know what? What's even more important is that we're seeing lower incidence of cancer in these animals. But because the diet's varied, and you want a specific diet for cancer, Rod, I suggest you go to the Epigenics Foundation. The who? The Epigenics Foundation is a world-leading foundation that is funding studies in the research between cancer, diet, lifestyle, longevity, all the things that I was just talking to you about. And they were funding a project called Keto Pets. So I was skeptical. I got on a plane, I flew to America. I had to see this. They showed me that this sanctuary that they have, this groundbreaking sanctuary, is full of the world's leading metabolic doctors for dogs. They were bringing in rescue animals, homeless dogs from different shelters around America that had terminal cancer. Stage four, not a long time to live. And they want to give them a second chance. With America's only PET, CT scanner, meaning they can follow the cancer from day one to the end of their protocol, which was a 120-day protocol, coupled with an unconventional metabolic diet, Keto Pets found the ability to slow down, to halt, or to reverse cancer. I said reverse cancer. What you're looking at here, I haven't shared the diet with you yet. <laughs> what you're looking at here is a standard bowl of dog food. This is what almost every single dog in the world is eating. But the three examples I just gave you, the oldest dog in the world, the dogs in the longevity product, and keto pets who are reversing cancer, their bowls kind of look like this. And what you're looking at is a full bowl of unprocessed fresh food. Doesn't seem so mind-blowing. Logically, we know as humans, man, you eat something good, you're gonna feel great. But in the dog food world, it's unconventional, it's unresearched. And just how awesome is this? My dog Sammy today is fighting cancer. I mean, she's beaten it. And she's the healthiest she's ever been since I made this dietary change. And some people may say, well, I don't know, that it looks very confusing. I wouldn't be able to do all that. So I saved this study for last. What you're looking at here is a Purdue study. In 2005, Purdue University wanted to know, all right, if we add a little bit of fresh food to a bowl of processed food, how much effect could this really have? So, three times a week, they took some green leafy vegetables and added it to a bowl of processed food. And the results that came back were jaw-dropping. How did it affect cancer? 90% decrease in the risk of cancer by just adding some green leafy vegetables to a bowl of processed food. Today, we bring these animals into our homes. We domesticate them. We bring them into our communities. We tell them, we want you to be able to understand our language. We want you to be able to behave the way that we tell you how to behave. We want you to adapt to our lifestyle if we get out or we sit at home. But more importantly, we don't give them a choice when it comes to their diets. We pick what we deem as nutritious and we put it into that bowl. And we say to them, you have two choices. You either eat what's in that bowl or you're not eating. Today, with the way the cancer epidemic is going, in you guys, and in our beautiful pets, it's showing no signs of slowing down. There has never been more of an important time than right now to research exactly what you guys are putting into your pet's bowls. Oh, and by the way, when an 85-year-old plumber from Austin, Texas, Jake Perry, this brilliant man was asked, Jake, how on earth did you set the Guinness World Record? Not once, but twice. With the oldest living cats in the world, a 34 and a 38-year-old cat, his response, I just added some fresh food to their diet. Thank you, guys. <laughs>